Look, I'll be the first to say antioxidants are good. Antioxidants are great. I think they have their place. But antioxidants, as you've probably heard me talk about before, should be used efficaciously, like at specific times. Otherwise, they are hugely detrimental. But I've learned some new stuff that I want to share with you, specifically surrounding stressful situations and specifically surrounding workouts. Now, in order to understand this, we have to understand how the body, particularly muscles, recover. And once we've gone through all this, you'll understand when not to take an antioxidant and two specific times to take them to actually get a maximum benefit from them. Let's dive in. Today's video is brought to us by Bond Charge and their sauna blanket. If you don't have the space for a massive sauna, then I definitely recommend you try Bond Charge's sauna blanket. It's an infrared sauna blanket, super low EMF, and we're talking getting up to like over 170 degrees so you can get your sweat on, you can get that benefit in a very portable way. Now I'm not talking like fit it in your suitcase on an airplane type portable, but definitely easy to fold up into like a one and a half by one and a half foot area that you could bring in your car with you. So if I'm traveling, going to a hotel or something like that on the road, super easy to bring my sauna with me. You've heard me talk about the benefits as far as heat shock proteins, as far as uh, lymphatic system, helping the brain, helping you sleep. So now you can take it with you or have it even in a small space. Maybe you've got an apartment or something like that. So I popped a link down below that also saves you some money if you want to try one out. So there's a discount link down below, first line in the description underneath this video. You've got to check them out. They're doing some really, really cool stuff and awesome to see something so portable. So it's common theory that when we're stressed out or when we're under physical stress, like a workout or whatever, that we should be increasing our antioxidant intake because it's going to help us blunt the oxidative stress that comes as a result of that. And that makes sense. And it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that, well, do I shut down endogenous production of these antioxidants? In other words, by taking antioxidants after a workout, do I actually stop the body from being able to recover? And the short answer to that is yes, but there's a lot more data that we know now that can allow us to strategically use them. So first off, when a muscle cell is working and a muscle contracts, you have a couple of filaments. You have myofilaments, so you have actin and myosin, and essentially they slide over each other and contract, and that's how muscle contracts. Well, at a cellular chemical level, what's happening is you have calcium binding to a protein called troponin. And when this happens, they bind to each other, the troponin kind of bends and calcium grabs it and kind of hooks onto it and pulls it and that causes that muscle to contract. It's this pulling of calcium and troponin locking onto each other. Well, what we have seen is that when there is lots of oxidative stress, it makes it so that those don't bind as well. So you get less of a muscle contraction. So that furthers the notion that, oh, well, I should be taking antioxidants when I work out. I should be taking antioxidants when I'm moving because it's increasing the contractile force. And that's actually very, very true. It can increase the effectiveness, which is why you see it in pre-workouts and things like that. The big problem comes when we start looking at the data as far as recovery and adaptation is concerned. So there was a study published in the journal Physiology that gave subjects 1,000 milligrams of vitamin C and a couple hundred milligrams of vitamin E. And they had them do HIIT training and endurance work and all of this. And then they did some muscle biopsies, and this is where stuff got kind of scary. They found that mitochondrial biogenesis, the actual like, adaptation at the mitochondrial level, had gone down 13% in the group that had the antioxidants, but it went up 19% and 59% respectively in the groups that did not. Okay, so what we're seeing here is that antioxidants coming in can actually help you perform better that day, but they are a detriment to the mitochondrial biogenesis and the actual, not only muscle recovery benefit, but the actual health benefit that you get from workouts. So doing something good by taking antioxidants is actually impeding your ability to get healthier in many ways. So if you are someone that is an athlete, which I know a lot of people watching this video are not professional athletes, but let's just acknowledge this for a second. If you're an athlete and you need to compete or you're running and you have your uh, run on race day, right? That would be a great day to take the antioxidants. You accept the fact that you're gonna get a little performance boost out of it, but it is going to be detrimental to your recovery, but you're not going for adaptation that day. You're going for a trophy, right? Adaptation happens during the training. Now, the same kind of thing can happen during stressful events, as far as like different reactions within the body, being tense and all this kind of stuff. If you're stressed out, 
you don't always want to just take antioxidants as a crutch, right? You want to allow your body the ability to deal with it, but if it becomes chronic, then it's a problem too. So you need to periodically take in, you know, vitamin C, vitamin E, alpha lipoic acid, things like that. Okay, I'm a big fan of alpha lipoic acid because it's fat soluble and I feel like you can, body can use it at different rates and it's very, very good for the skin. Anyway, I digress, I do another video on that. Point is, is that you need to periodically take it. So the oxidative stress is what triggers the brain to kickstart adaptation. Without the reactive oxygen species, there's no stimuli to actually recover and get better. It's like you're not training with that weight vest on, so you're never gonna get better and stronger. Now there's an interesting paper published in a Scandinavian journal. This took a look at antioxidant-rich diet compared to antioxidant supplementation. They found that an antioxidant-rich diet did not impair recovery and mitochondrial biogenesis at high altitude extreme training, whereas supplementation did. So if you're worried about, oh, I don't wanna have that strawberry after my workout, Something about the natural ability and the natural just container of having antioxidants in their natural bioavailable form doesn't seem to affect this. Because when we're taking antioxidant supplements, that is a serious dose at a very specific time. And that can be detrimental. But what about just getting antioxidants in for antioxidants sake? Okay, well, first of all, nutrition is gonna be the number one way, right? Strawberries, raspberries, leafy greens, lean red meat that has lots of minerals and nutrients in it as well. But if you're going to have it, have it at least four hours away from your workout, okay? Or four hours away from any stressful period. Try to have them towards the end of the day when you have more food in your system, and that can help you out immensely. So when it comes to your post-workout nutrition, your protein and getting your phytonutrients from fruit, those polyphenols from fruit, might not be a bad idea. So maybe a protein shake, some lean meat, some strawberries, some raspberries, maybe a little bit of mango, something like that where you're getting a diversity of fruits, but you're also getting the carbohydrates that you might want post-workout. And hot tip, you may wanna wait 30 minutes post-workout because you want your body to get that additional fat burn that kind of continues, sort of riding the wave, so to speak, after your workout. And then as far as supplements that you can take around dinner time that might help you out. Again, I'm a fan of alpha lipoic acid. I'm a fan of vitamin C, but try not to do it in the ascorbic acid form. Try to do it in a whole food form like acerola fruit or something like that. You can find forms of vitamin C supplement that are not ascorbic acid, okay? Vitamin E, I don't take a lot of. It's good for the skin occasionally, but I just think there's better antioxidants. Echinacea, echinacea is just nice just because it is more of a fruit extract. Things like hascap berry, not a supplement, but a concentrated berry, okay? That's, you're gonna find it like Nova Scotia, like in Northern Canada. So a very, very polyphenol, anthocyanin-rich berry extract that you can get, again, in powder form, you can get it in liquid form, things like that. Cod liver oil, that's going to be a natural anti-inflammatory, that's going to be a natural antioxidant effect, just because the omega-3. So you kinda wanna look at this holistically, rather than just quick shot in the arm of a mega dose of something. I'll see you tomorrow.